Welcome to this service on Father's Day. It's Sunday the 21st of June and we're looking at some great verses in Peter's first letter and uh, digging out together some resurrection realities, looking at the implications of the fact that Jesus is risen from the dead. I'm going to begin with some words from Peter and uh, we're going to focus on just one of these lines a bit later on but listen to this great start. He says grace and peace be yours in abundance and then he goes on to say praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Well, we're going to look together today at how it is that God upholds his people until he takes them home one day. And that's going to be reflected in our first song together, which will be Who, O Lord, Could Save Themselves. Peter has opened up his letter teaching people about how God chooses us. He sets us apart to be his own people. He enables us to become more like Jesus through the power of the Spirit and provides for ongoing forgiveness through the sprinkling by Jesus' blood. Well, we're going to confess our sins and ask him to sprinkle us clean, declare us clean in his sight. Here's some words of confession. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from the grave and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the way of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin that we may be your one holy and faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Amen. Let's hear the words of reassurance that we hear from God's word. Peter would later write, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that you might live for righteousness, by his wounds you have been healed. 
For we were like sheep going astray, but now we return to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. Amen. Amen. The collect for this Sunday. Lord, you've taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to join you in the words of the Nicene Creed. It was uh, penned out in 325 AD to sort out controversies in the church and helps us to keep the main things the main thing. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have an end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and into the life in the world to come. Amen. I'd like to lead us in the Lord's Prayer and then a few thoughts as we uh, make some intercessions for the wider world. This is the Lord's Prayer in the contemporary version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we think on this Father's Day, especially about the fatherhood of God, as well as about our human fathers. Uh, and we hope that we can give thanks for both of those and pray for strengthening in our families of a father's role. Let's pray together. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. And so we want to thank you that we can know you as our Father, the one who watches over our lives, the one who cares for us, who provides for our needs, who guides us, who is wise and holy and good. We pray that we would understand more about what it means to know you as our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, that we delight in what you've done for us in the past, and how we can depend on you today, and how also we can trust you for our future. We ask that you would also be at work in the wider church, that you'd strengthen the leaders of the church, that they may have their focus on Jesus Christ, to promote his name in this nation, to uphold justice and righteousness, to show mercy and encourage generosity. We pray that the church would confess your name and not be distracted, to be united in your truth rather than compromising with a world which has gone astray, that we may live together in your love, practising forgiveness and to reveal your glory in the world, that many will look on 
and say, we too would long to know this God that you worship. We also pray that you'd bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, that you'd give wisdom to all in authority who work with her. We thank you, Lord, for those who interact with the royal family, and you pray that you'd give them great strength to keep, be an example to the nation and also to be a wise voice towards the government. We pray you direct our government in the ways of justice and peace. We pray that our relationships with other countries will be good and where there needs to be work needs to be done in order to improve relationships, this will be successful to promote peace and blessing on others. We pray for our families and we thank Lord of how Many have a father for whom we pray they would be thankful. We pray that the blessings of having a family would not be just taken for granted. That's where fathers have done great things, there'll be thankfulness. And that'll be shown in the way we're generous towards others and behave towards others. Where there's sadness in families, where things have gone wrong, we pray for forgiveness. We pray for the healing of hurts. We pray for a fresh start. And we pray that families may be a blessing to the wider world. And where, Lord, uh, families have been broken up for one reason or another, we pray that people may be able to support one another. There may be your grace shown in relationships to help those who may be uh, on their own, may be lonely, those who are in families where there's a member missing for various reasons. They will be able to encourage one another all the more as we see the day drawing near for your return. We also pray, Lord, for comfort and for healing for those who suffer at this time. There may be people who are suffering in body or mind or spirit. We pray, Lord, for their strengthening. We pray that you'd give them courage and hope in the midst of their troubles and you bring them the joy of your salvation. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us and pray we may reflect that in the world as we serve you each day. Amen. This week's reading is taken from John, chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
So I'm going to read to you the uh, couple of lines from 1 Peter 1. Uh, we're focusing on the bit towards the end. Uh, Peter says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that's ready to be revealed in the last time. So we're looking at that last verse where it speaks about God shielding his people. Now, three days after Jesus' death, he was raised to new life. And there are many results of that which are listed here by Peter. And that's why we're looking in some detail at these verses. And they are wonderful things to look at and concentrate and meditate on. It's rather like taking a slow sightseeing walk rather than rushing through the itinerary to get to the end of the journey. And we want to take in each of these sights because spiritually they're very nourishing for us. We're spotting resurrection realities. And here we find Peter's outpour of praise encourages the Christians who are in ancient Turkey, they're, they're scattered far and wide in small churches, to set their hope on the inheritance which they will receive when Jesus returns one day. So that's good for us as we think about how do we cope with life in this world or well, where to do the same. Now we may know the wonder of being born again. It's given us a new start, a new life. We may delight in knowing God as our Father, how important that is on this Father's Day. We may be aware of the Holy Spirit now at work in us, changing us to become more like Jesus. We're thankful for the waves of mercy and grace which are ours only through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we too overflow with praise for the Lord. You might join in with these verses and say, that's so true, it's wonderful. But we, will we wonder, will we have enough energy and strength to actually remain steadfast to the end. Well, what Peter teaches us here is that the major cause of the Christian's preservation is God's power. And we're to put our faith in his power. So let's look at that together today as we think about this idea of being shielded. And Peter starts, I think, by helping us to remember various things. Uh, he says, first of all, remember you are heirs. Uh, all who come to faith in Jesus as their saviour and Lord are the apple of God's eye. They are showered with his love. And Peter's already reminded them how they are God's elect in verse one. Uh, they're God's chosen ones, verse two. What marks us out as God's special people is not coming from a particular line of the family or having a particular reputation that we developed, but it's a miracle of new birth to become God's children. And so they can confidently expect, as he says in verse 4, an inheritance. How exciting that is. It's an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Now, the reason being that our inheritance, we're told in the rest of verse 4, we're now picking up on this, is that it's kept in heaven for you. So it's being kept there safe for all who are believers. It means that, yes, they can expect danger in this life. We're not spared that. But they can also expect deliverance by God's hand. And it means that nothing on earth can change or destroy this great inheritance. So final salvation, the rescue from sin and death and hell, and a life of fellowship with God and his people is kept in heaven. It's secure, like being in a bank vault. Well, that's very important because we may feel very anxious to whether we can actually hold out or not. Maybe we wonder, will I be dropped from the squad? for my poor track record in the face of trials and temptations, confusion and fears that I face in life. Has God done so much for his people and then his step back to see how we get on? Well, Peter explains with a very loud no, that's not the case. God is active. He shields us until the end. And that's what he moves on to in the next bit in verse five, where he says, remember God's power which is at work. Remember God's power. Now, Peter reminds us to trust in God's work and not our own. He says in verse 5, who through faith are shielded by God's power. 
If faith was about my achievements, then I'd be as good as a sandcastle on the beach. It stands so nicely until a wave comes along. If faith was about my achievement, it would lead to either pride over what I've done or what I've achieved, or it would lead to utter despair over what I've not done or I've failed to do. The good news is that God inspires faith in his words of promise. Salvation is sure because we depend on what God has done for us, not what we've done ourselves. So Peter says that we're, it's through faith we are shielded by God's power. It's a picture of a military guard, isn't it, that's watching over something, watching over our salvation. This salvation can't be lost, it can't escape, it can't leak away, it can't be attacked, it can't be stolen. As we trust in God, we experience his power to protect us. We won't avoid disease or danger, but we will be able to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, sure that God will guard us until the end for all who put their trust in him. Just think for a moment on this Father's Day how a child is to put their trust in their dad. Fathers are dependent on for giving their protection and providing for the needs of their children. And a good father will always try and go beyond what's expected, even when a child doubts them, or maybe even if that child is undeserving. That's the nature, isn't it, of the father, a good father to a child. Well, our God, our God is our Father in heaven, and he uses his great power to shield us, to protect us, to guard what is our great inheritance. And then lastly, he remembers, he reminds us about the goal. Remember the goal. God's guarding his people is right until the end. Look at verse 5 again. For a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now salvation is used in different ways in the Bible. Sometimes it refers to our past forgiveness, our justification being put right with God. On other occasions it refers to our ongoing growth in godliness, our sanctification as Peter himself has mentioned in verse 2. But now Peter's got in sight the full blessings that accompany Jesus' return to gather his people. That will be the day of redemption. The word ready, ready at that last time, it tells us that things are already prepared, but it won't be revealed or unveiled until the very last day, the day of judgment. You see, God won't stop. He doesn't take time off from guarding his people until he brings them home. So let's be thankful to God because through the Lord Jesus Christ's resurrection, we can have a hope. We have this great inheritance and God will shield us as we put our faith in him until that last time when we receive that inheritance. What great encouragement Peter provides for you and for me today and for all his readers. Let's be the ones who follow in faith, trusting in God, who's the one who shields our faith. Thank you.
Well, let's uh, take the opportunity for a brief prayer to commit ourselves to God's way now in the light of what we've been learning together, which I hope has been a great encouragement to you. Almighty and loving God, we bless you for the gift of your word. We pray now for the grace to believe what we have heard and to live in ways that honour you above all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen to these words from the end of Jude, a great encouragement to us. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Saviour be glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Do join us on another occasion for further services as we learn what it means to follow this risen Jesus, living in the light of the resurrection realities, and especially this one of being shielded by God's power until the end. <laughs>